dear students i am dr shikha pandey associate professor from institute of aeronautical engineering today in this lecture series of the subject integrated solid waste management today i will discuss about the integrated solid waste management means the integrated plan the whole planning about this solid waste management so first of all we'll look into the exact meaning of this integrated solid waste management so you can we can say that it is a comprehensive waste pre prevention recycling composting and disposal program means four steps are there in this integrated solid waste management first is about the prevention of, of waste then recycling of waste composting and then the final disposal of the waste so first is like waste prevention means the prevention of the waste or to minimize the waste and sustainable use and multi use of many of any product so if any product will be there we can go for its multi use or its sustainable use waste minimization will come from the waste prevention so waste prevention will leads toward the minimization of waste minimization or source minimization or source reduction minimization or reduction of waste and then after that uh, next point is about the composting composting will uh, means recycling we can recycle the waste and then final is the disposal of the disposal program so integrated solid waste management in an is a comprehensive plan for the waste reduction waste prevention waste recycling waste composting and its final disposal source reduction is like the minimization of the waste then we'll go for the recycling recycling means what processing of non biodegradable waste into the recover commercially some in for the recovery of some commercially important um, things like if plastic will be there we can recycle the plastic paper can be recycled to make something else like some cardboards or same is in case of metals glass e waste recycling so recycling is like to processing of all uh, any non biodegradable waste to recover commercially valuable materials like plastic paper metals glass e waste recycling and all composting again composting is like it is a uh, it is a process of processing of organic waste so we can recover some compost by the method of windrow composting in vessel composting or vermi composting also so this is about the composting process like the organic waste should be processed and we will recover some important compost either by the method of windrow composting in vessel composting or vermi composting next thing is again about the waste to energy so waste to energy means like the recovering energy before the final disposal of waste means before the final disposal of waste to recover some of the energy like in case of for example rdf biomethanation some co processing of combustible non biodegradable dry fraction of municipal solid waste and incineration also so rdf means refuse drive fuel refuse derived fuels and biomethanation process co processing of combustible some non biodegradable dry fraction of municipal solid waste and it's and then next is the incineration also so recovering any energy before its final disposal of the waste next is about landfill so landfill will represents the safe disposal of inert residual waste at the sanitary landfill so you can see that this is the integrated solid waste management program and it will involves from the its source reduction to its recycling either to go for the composting if organic in nature waste is then it will go for the composting if some commercially valuable product will be there in the waste then we'll go for the recycling and uh, and after the final uh, workout it will goes for the landfill also so a landfill means the safe disposal of all inert residual waste into the sanitary landfill so uh, for any waste first this will indicate the most preferred method and least preferred so obviously most preferred is come from the uh, either source reduction then it's a recycling composting waste to energy and landfill now comes to the next point this is about the integrated solid waste management planning and processes so planning will be like it is there you can see that for the planning first what you have to do we have to identify the needs so with the need we will do the the what is the 
existing system first we will do the review of the existing systems and review of the existing regulation so existing system means what is the different systems that is followed for this type of waste and regulation will uh, represents the what is the uh, already existing regulation about this waste and then organize organize decision making frameworks so after reviewing the existing system and existing regulation next thing will be there they that is about to organize some decision making frameworks and then after doing these homeworks we uh, they will establish some objectives so some objectives should be there and for that objective it should be proceed further so this planning process will starts from the review of already existing systems reviewing of already existing regulation and on the basis of that we organize one decision making frameworks and with decision making from framework it will goes for the establishing some objectives and then in that particular objectives the potential components has been discussed so with the potential components next point will come that will be about compare the options then develop any integrated solid waste management plan then implementation of the plan then evaluate the waste management system so after evaluating the waste management system again it will comes for the identifying need so it is a circle process you can see that it will come after three point will be there first with the education then public part and part participation and then research so uh, education means people will be educated towards this pros and consequences that is related with the comprehensive solid waste management program public participation will be required so that the public will be involved and they will take in the decision making parts and decision making concept and then some r and d will be there on these three points so there are physically elements that needs to be addressed for the integrated solid waste management system so few physical elements are there these elements will um, be addressed into this system first is about the environment then public health and then resource management so the work on this integrated solid waste management system to work well or to work sustainably over a long periods are involved with the environment then the public health that is the collection of solid waste and then resource management so uh, environment means the proper waste treatment processes and its disposal so protection of the environment to the waste chain next point will become this is about the collection of the waste so collection of waste will uh, will maintain the uh, public health of the people like the health condition in some urban conglomerates and particularly through a good public health during the treatments and disposal resource management will be like recycling of an organic material like 4r will be there we will discuss about this 4r in the next slide so closing the loop like is a phrase that we can use for the waste management closing the loop means the returning the material and nutrients again for the beneficial use by preventing waste and striving for high rate of organic recovery reuse and recycling prior to the industrial revolution before industrial revolution many cities had few material resources like money was scarce and household had and they had more needs than they could meet before industrial revolution not this much of waste was there and uh, the this city will have few material resources money were scarce and household has more needs than they could meet wastage should be minimized means uh, solid waste waste will be there that should be minimized and products should be, should be repaired and reused material should be recycled and organic matter should be returned to the soil what is the main fundamental about this first is the any product will be there that should be minimized then uh, then waste should be minimized for product it should be repaired and reused material will be there material will be recycled and the organic matter should be returned to the soil many developing and transitional countries some cities still having an active informal sectors and micro enterprises recycling reuse and repair system then it will be often achieve recycling and recovery rate also so some developing and transitional countries they have an active informal sectors and micro enterprises recycling and some re, uh, reuse and repair system also 
then which can often achieve recycling and recovery rate. So the informal recycling sector has shown to save the city 20% of or more of its waste management budget. So informal recycling sector are there and they they are showing very good pro, very good profit on this waste management like 20% or more of its waste management budget has been saved. The priorities of good resource management are expressed in this 3R. 3R will be goes for the reduce, recycle and reuse. 3R will be there. So this three last R can be split be, uh, between the dry recycle. This R will be dry recycle, dry recycle and the organic recycle. Biosolids and organic waste. Next, you will come on this point. This integrated solid waste management concept mainly deal with the 4R concept. This is reduce, reuse and recycle. Then next is the recovery. So by reusable, some rechargeable and refillable is also there. The adoption of the 4R concepts helps to minimize the amount of waste that should be handled by the municipal authority. So minimizing the public health and environmental risk associated with it. The uh, integrated solid waste management concept will be there and that concept will be de deals with the 4R concept. This is reduce, reuse, recycle and recovery. Buy any reusable item, then you can go for the either rechargeable or refillable. The adoption of the 4R concept will be helps to minimize the amount of waste. It will be helps in towards the minimization of waste or reduction of waste that should be handled by the municipal authority. Minimizing the public health and environmental risk which is associated with it also. Next, then next point is about the returning nutrients to the soil. So by the process of composting or digesting, organic waste will be there that is called as biosolids. So uh, biosolid will involve some plants and animal waste from any kitchen garden and agriculture production together with the safely managed and treated human excreta. So uh, for the from any kitchen garden or agriculture production together with the safely managed and treated human ex excreta, these are the source of key nutrients for the agriculture value chain and their proper utilization is important for the food security and sustainable development also. By the process of composting or some or digesting some organic waste like biosolids, plant and animal waste from the kitchen garden and agriculture production together with the safely managed and treated human excreta, these are the source of key nick means this biosolid is a source of key nutrients for the agriculture value chain and their proper utilization and it is important for the food security and sustainable development and uh, one more point is related with this biosolid is that the biosolid is the organic matter that will be recovered from the sewage treatment process and it can be used as a fertilizer so here one more point is there that is called a sludge sludge will be there sludge is also called as biosolid means it is the organic matter that is recovered from the sewage treatment process and generally it is used as a fertilizer. Then ISWM governance and features. The governance strategy is to deliver a well-functioning system of integrated solid waste management until the year 1990 that would pr probably have been framed primarily around the technologies. But there is consensus today on the need for a much broader approach. Three interrelated requirements for delivering this integrated solid waste management are distinguished under the framework of good waste governance. So three interrelated requirements will be there. This requirement is used for delivering integrated solid waste management and it will be distinguished under the framework of good waste governance. So there is a need for the system that should be first is a inclusive. Be inclusive means it will provide transparent spaces for the stakeholder to contribute as a user, provider and enabler. So it will be inclusive. In that inclusive, it will provide some transparent spaces for stakeholders to contribute as user, provider and enabler. 
uh, it should be financial also financial sustainability financial sustainable it means it will lead to the cost effective cost effective and affordable rest is on the base of sound institutions and proactive policies without such a strong and transparent institutional framework the system will not work well over a long term also rest on the base of sound institutions and proactive policies so without such a strong and transparent institutional framework the system will not work well over a long term then inclusivity inclusivity means the municipal government is responsible for the solid waste management in any city and but cannot deliver on the responsibilities by prescribing or undertaking measures in isolation entirely on their own also the best solid waste management systems involves all the stakeholders in planning implementing and monitoring the challenges also users or some waste generation generators are the key stakeholders in waste management as are the ngo women unions and other organizations that represent them in the policy and governance process so users or waste generators are there and they are the key stakeholders in the waste management and they are the ngo women unions and other organization that represent them in the policy and governance process the reference cities will demonstrate the range of good practice in areas like consultation communication and involvement of users participatory and inclusive planning inclusivity in siting facilities institutionalizing the inclusivity the solid waste platform so the consultation communication and involvement of user participatory and inclusive planning also inclusivity in siting the facilities institutionalizing the inclusivity the solid waste platform so this uh, this will demonstrate the reference cities the range of good practice in area and this these are the few points like consultation communication and involvement of user participatory and inclusive planning inclusivity in the siting facilities also and next is the institutionalizing the inclusivity the solid waste platform financial sustainability now we'll discuss about the financial sustainability so financial sustainability in solid waste management is the major issue for cities all over the world because in developing countries like india solid waste management represents a significant portion of the total recurrence budget of the city so with the figure of 3 to 15% of the being reported by the reference cities so when the solid waste budgets are divided by the population when we are going to divide the solid waste budget with the total population and the per capita figure it will be expressed as a percentage of gdp and most of the uh, cities are in the range of 0.1 to 0.7% so and the gdp is around 0.1 to 0.7% so yet in the relatively high cost collection services coverage is often low and disposal standards will remain poor also so this is about the solid waste budget and that solid waste budget we will calculate by the population and the per capita figure and it is expressed as a percentage of gdp most of the cities are in the range of 0.1 to 0.7% yet in the relatively high cost and the collection services coverage is often low and disposal standards remain always poor so the first step essential first step is to establish the current cost that serve as a baseline for comparing the cost of any proposed improvements to the waste management system so initially initially essentially first step is about to establish the current cost that serves as a baseline for comparing the cost of any proposed improvement to the waste management system next is about the some sound institution and proactive policy so sound institution will represents a strong and transparent institutional framework which is essential for the good governance in the solid waste so without such a framework the system will not work well over a long term also indeed it has been suggested in the 2001 united nation habitat world urban forum that the cleanliness of the city and the effectiveness of its solid waste management system may be useful as a proxy indicator of good governance 
So if waste services are to be effective, a city must have the capacity and the organizational structure to manage the finances and services in an efficient and transparent manner also. Streamline management responsibility with the communities and listen to the users. So if waste services should be effective, a city must have the capacity and the organizational structure to manage the finance and services in an efficient and transparent manner and the streamlined management responsibility will be with the communities and listen to the users also. So it has been su suggested in the year 2001 in United Nation, this is Habitat World Urban Forum that the cleanliness of a city and the effectiveness of its solid waste management system could be useful as a proxy indicator of good governance also. So if a waste service are to be effective, a city must have the capacity and organizational structure to manage the finances and services in an efficient and transparent manner. So if a city will must have the capacity and the organizational structure to manage the finances and services in an efficient and transparent manner, streamline management responsibilities with some communities and listen to the users. The necessary condition that must be met for successful private sector involvement it will include some competition, transparency, apparency, and accountability also. So all of which will help to ensure that the contracting process is free from the corruption and that citizens receive the services as contracted. The necessary condition, some sound institutional proactive policies will be like that. It will be having a necessary condition that we met by from successful private sectors, which will include like competition, transparency, and some accountability. So then all of which will help to ensure the contracting process and which will be free from the corruptions and that citizen receive the services which is contracted also. Then gender equity aspect. Gender equity aspect, aspect is again one very important point in this integrated solid waste management planning. So this will require some intervention to protect women from the harmful effect of unhygienic practices, which also affect their social functioning in childcare and family food supply, like human scavenger before. Then the municipal solid waste management system design should therefore consider the health and safety concern of a human, now of a woman. So it, it will be uh, uh, followed toward the safety concern and the social functions in the child care and family food supply. So women is also associated with the hygiene. They have to do some child care and they have to make the food. So if they are they doing this uh, unhygienic practices, then uh, he health of all family people will be distracted, will be uh, deteriorated. That's why it will be uh, provided gender equity aspect in that form. They require interventions to protect the women from the harmful effects of some unhygienic practices that also again affect their social functions in childcare and family food supply. The municipal so uh, waste management system should also engage in the social impact assessment to bring gender gaps to the forefront for systematic analysis and corrective and appropriate responses also. So this municipal solid waste management system is engaged in the social impact assessment and that will bring some gender gaps to the forefront for systematic analysis and corrective and appropriate responses also. So these are the some references of some of the textbook that uh, you can follow for, for more study. We, uh, this uh, textbook you can go and you can find out uh, about uh, more detail about these topics. So now I am concluding my lecture. At this stage in this uh, lecture I have discussed about the integrated solid waste management plan for a city. So for this, what are the important factors that should be responsible for, for making this integrated solid waste management plan? So thank you for today's lecture. If you have any query, if you have uh, any question regarding this lecture, you can write in the comment box or you can directly mail me onto my given mail ID, shikha Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.